this week's vlog is going to be a bit different because we decided to show you the real reason why we spent all our life savings on our chateau. Of course, we fell in love with it immediately as we saw it, but there's a second reason, not less important, and that is its location. So let us show you one of the most beautiful harbour towns in France. My name is Anna. I'm an English former fashion and textile designer. I moved to Paris age 23 to work for the French couture house Bauman and stayed for the croissants, the wine, and of course for Philip, a filmmaker from the South Tyrolean Alps. After 10 amazing years, getting married, buying and renovating two homes and having two babies, we decided city life was no longer for us. Philip had been dreaming of buying a chateau since the day we met and finally convinced me to start looking. We came to visit Chateau gonville sur en fleur Despite being in quite poor condition and needing a complete renovation, we immediately fell in love. With a tight budget, we had no choice but to do most of the renovations by ourselves. We're learning new skills as we go, building muscles we never knew we had, and getting creative to make the chateau as personal as possible whilst preserving its historic features. It's all part of this crazy family adventure and we wouldn't change it for anything. After last week's video, there was quite a bit of confusion in the comments about the languages spoken here at the Chateau. I'm Italian, but I'm from a German-speaking part of Italy, in the north, somewhere in between Switzerland and Austria. I grew up speaking German, my school was German and most of my friends would be German-speaking. At the Chateau, we mostly speak English because, as you know, Anna is from the UK. The kids speak French at school and when we have French friends over, we of course speak French at the Chateau. And because Anna doesn't speak German, me and the kids, we have a secret language. And I'm going to show you how that works. Lily, Ella, when you both have a question with Esel, you get a piece of chocolate, okay? Kids, what would you like for Christmas? Um, a donkey. Oh, and you, Ella, what would you like for Christmas? Uh, a donkey. Philip. Du bekommst keinen Esel, du bist ein Esel. Anna, who told you to say that? My mom? Lingoda. Lingoda? Yeah. Who's Lingoda? My secret weapon. I discovered Lingoda a few months ago. It's a language learning school and it also happens to be this week's sponsor. Definitely having a teacher is the main thing that helps me to learn a language. I think it's the encouragement. I think I need somebody who's going to guide me, correct me, you know, give me those little kind of tips for how to figure things out. Is it a fun? Fogel. Fogel sounds the same. Ah, it's a fun. Fogel. Ah. Which is why I'm such a big fan of Lingoda, because they have live classes with a real native speaker basically 24 seven. So I can pick and choose a class to fit with whatever I'm doing that day, which most of the time happens to be once the kids have gone to bed. Lingoda obviously offer a monthly subscription, which is super flexible and you can cancel any time, but they also offer something else, which I think is a really cool idea. It's called a marathon. And basically the idea is you sign up for three to 12 months courses. And if you complete 90% of your planned classes, they will give you up to 400 euros back. We're gonna put a link in the description of this video below. And if you click that link, then you're gonna get a free seven day trial. And if you do like it, which I'm pretty sure you're going to, then we have this discount code here, which will give you 30% off your first month's payment. It's not just because Lingoda are sponsoring this week's video, but I have really been enjoying classes and I am definitely going to continue learning German with them. Originally, Enfleur was a small harbour town. It was basically this harbour, 100 houses and a wall protecting it. 
And because it has a wall, it was a perfect hideout for pirates. And they went out in the sea and captured English ships. Unfortunately, despite the fortifications, during the Hundred Year War, the English captured Honfleur. But it was after the war, when the French conquered it back in the 16th century, that Honfleur started thriving. It became extremely important, thanks to the commerce in between France and England, and people started discovering the world, starting from this harbour. One of the most prominent travellers was a man called... Samuel de Champlain. Just checked if you remembered. Samuel de Champlain founded Quebec, which is in nowadays Canada. And he started from Honfleur. Here he is, Philip. Samuel. And this is our favourite oyster bar on this old fishing boat over here. Have you seen this house, Philip? How old do you think it is? It looks very old. I love all these back streets and alleyways. Look here, a little secret passageway. I'm going to show you a hidden garden that not many people know about, and it's just here. It's quite fascinating because actually it's where two small little rivers meet and in the medieval times there was an old mill here where they were producing flour and then later on there were some tannery companies set up here. But I love it because it feels like you're walking through like a passage through time. Philip, what do you think these architectural features are? I think it's toilets, Anna. They are still in use. How old do you think it is? Maybe 15th, 16th century. It's amazing. I've just seen, I think all these glass panes are handmade. It looks like, like the bottom of a bottle or something. This corner here hasn't probably changed for hundreds of years. No, it's incredible. Have you seen how beautiful this is? And you know the two lions? Those are the symbols for Upper and Lower Normandy. And they date back to the times of William the Conqueror. Maybe we need some of those in our chateau. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Maybe we need to come up with a design for a flag. I know already what colour it would be. We don't even need to go there, Philip. Orange. Let's not upset anybody. Fleur is also a fishing harbour and the cool thing is that twice a week you can come here, wait for one of the fishing boats and buy directly some of the fish freshly from the boats. Anna just ran off to try and get some scallops because it's scallop season now in October, but it's a bit late and they might be sold out. We got lucky. I managed to get some just in time before they shut. We can have some yummy scallops for dinner tonight with maybe a nice cider or a glass of wine. I can't wait.
One of the main sites in Honfleur is the St. Catherine's Church. In the 15th century, there wasn't enough money in the city to build a church out of stone, but they had a lot of timber and very skilled shipbuilders. Now, Honfleur has one of the most impressive wooden churches in Europe, and if you see it from inside, it just looks like an inverted ship's hull. What strikes you when you walk inside is the echo. It's much softer than you would find in a church built out of brick or stone. However, this construction method had a downside. In order to prevent lightning and strike the building, they had to build the church tower a couple of meters away from the main building. It also has a structural advantage because it prevents the vibrations from the bell tower transmitting to the fragile church structure. The model ships are offerings from sailors and passengers to thank God for surviving dangerous adventures at sea. Anna managed to get some really nice scallops from the harbour in Honfleur, fresh from the boat. And I'm going to prepare them. Scallops are super easy to make. The only thing that could go wrong is to overcook them. And they do have quite a subtle flavour, so it's nice to prepare them with something more intense. I'm going to use beetroot from our garden. Yes, they don't look that nice because they're a little small this year. But they're perfectly fine for what we plan to do today. It does look a little bit like a rat's tail. Parsley, not from our garden, because somebody female who happens to be married to me, I don't want to give a name, thought it was wheat and took it out from the garden and threw it away. So the parsley is going to be cooked. Hey. Hey, how are you doing? I'm fine. Do you need some help? Uh, yeah, actually, could you take over the camera work? I was going to help you with cooking, but... No, it's better because this, so I, <laughs> I don't need to jump back and forth to change the camera angle. All right, then. I'm quickly cooking the parsley in salty water. 30 seconds. Can you count to 30? Why, why, that? why are you doing that? Can you count to 30? Oh, uh, one? No, Philip, seriously. You have to put Seven, a timer on. 8, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You count too fast. 17. 16. 18. 17. I feel like we're counting like Lily. She always forgets number 13 for 27, some reason. 27. 28. 30. You missed 29. Oh. <laughs> 29. 30. 31. 32. 33. I think we're good now. No, the water wasn't hot enough. It doesn't really... It's... Hang on, let me have a look. What's yeah. wrong with the water? Now it's coming. I said another 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And now immediately in the, into the ice. Because if you don't do that, it loses its green color. It stabilizes the chlorophyll. You see how nice and green they still are? If you don't put them into the ice, they really lose their color. They get all brown and not really nice. A squeeze of lemon. This is normally something you would do in a blender, but we don't have a blender. A bit of salt. Philip, I love how you use my apron to dry your hands. Oh, sorry, is it an apron? Yeah. Okay, well, I can wear it then. Yeah, you should wear it. It looks good on you. Everything looks good on me. That's why they keep sending me stuff. No, they don't. What do you know? What's that, a bit of pepper? A bit of pepper, and that's it. And um, could you please give me a spoon from your side? 
which perfectly illustrates how unpractical this kitchen island is because <laughs> you need to have two people you need to have an assistant on the other side exactly. of the island and what's the most important thing in cooking seasoning well seasoning and then tasting tasting okay how is it missing salt Let's do the same scene again. How is it? Perfect. Our compost bin. Very practical and ecological, but not very nice on camera. Okay, step two. Sesame seed oil. Mm. Roasted sesame seeds. It's really yummy. I can see you're getting creative. <laughs> And I can have a blender. For Christmas? Yeah. For you for Christmas, I was thinking a uh, yogurt machine. <laughs> that sounds good to me. That's how sexy our Christmas presents are. That's how much we love each other. Yeah. Mm. But it's a little bit too dense, so we just add a little bit of water. I put the tiniest amount of salt in it. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Oh, that tastes amazing. It tastes a little bit smoked. Mm -hmm. Did you do something to it? Well, yeah, I put the uh, sesame oil in, which is made out of roasted sesame seeds. I'm also gonna add a little bit of chorizo. It gives it a little bit of spiciness and yumminess and fat. You know what's missing? What? Something a bit crocky, croquant. Like How is that uh, in English? crunchy. Crunchy, exactly, something crunchy. So I have an idea, I'm gonna use bread Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make some um, croutons. Some croutons? Croutons. Look, my mom brought us these. These are a bit broken from the transport, but these are really nice traditional hard bread loaves from my region. What is it called? Schüttelbrot. Schüttelbrot. Shaking bread. If they wouldn't have been broken on the way from Südtirol to here, they would look like this. But I'm just going to break them up a little bit. A tiny amount of oil because obviously these chorizo are full of fats as well. And it's basically finished. Except for the scallops. Except for the scallops, but they need to be made the really last moment. So are you ready to eat after mm. this? Yeah. Good. The most important thing though, Philip, is do we have something to drink? Yes, there's plenty of water. No, I'm talking about cider or wine. Ah, yes, we can arrange that. While you were looking for wine, I added the bread into the chorizo, nothing else. Actually, there's quite a lot of scallops, Philip. You got so excited. Well, it's only at certain times of year that it's scallop season, so... The friendly lady at the boat already took them out of the shell for us. So all you have to do is clean them. By the way, big question for our new kitchen. Should we go with gas or should we switch to induction? What do you think? Well, I love gas because it's, I'm used to it. It's easier to use, it's easy to switch on. You see if the flame is big or low, it heats up easily, it cools down quickly. But I know that a lot of chefs nowadays switch to induction as well. I really don't know. Why don't we just ask the world? Brilliant idea. So you guys out there, gas or induction? If you have experience with bigger kitchens and if you like cooking, maybe you can tell us what you prefer and if induction is a good replacement for gas. All right? Yep. One minute? Yep. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. That's a minute. Other side. I think they're done, Anna. Wow.
Ella's just come in and she's trying to steal the beetroot. Ella, we still need it. And Ella is wearing her pink ballet outfit, which is probably the worst thing to be wearing when you're handling beetroot. Do you want to try it? Give it a taste. Mm, good. <laughs> I'm not going to fly this one. How much did you pay her? What do you think, Ella? Good. I'm not convinced she liked it. It looks good to me. I'm very excited. Well, it's just a little snack, isn't it? Yeah. And I've poured us some nice white wine. So here we go, my love. It looks a bit empty. Philip, I am really impressed. I think this looks like restaurant food. It looks like a prototype of a restaurant food, but for us it's good enough. The most important thing is obviously what it tastes like anyway, so... Go for it. I'm going to give it a try. <gasps> it's really good. Wow. Mm. Did you swallow the whole scallop? Mm-hmm. Oh, is that how you do it in the UK? Because we in France, we cut it. Well, I didn't have, have a knife. It's really, really good. And the beetroot with the sesame and then the chorizo. Oh, wow. Let me just try that mix. Mmm. It's delicious. Isn't it great to have this kind of food freshly fished five minutes down from your home? I mean, we are pretty lucky. Cheers, my love. Cheers, darling. And thank you for cooking. And thank you for buying these nice scallops. <laughs> it's really fresh. They're incredibly fresh. That's so nice. Mm. You Good. happy? I'm happy. That was the perfect starter. Thanks. And now I'm very hungry. So what's the main course? Frozen pizza? If you enjoyed this episode don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for exclusive videos and behind the scenes updates have a look at our patreon page thank you so much for watching